Okay. Good morning, everyone. We're here for Marion County Board of Commissioners weekly board session. It's Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. It's 9 o'clock. We are in the center hearing room at 555 Court Street, Northeast in Salem. As always, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First up, we have Katrina Rothenberger to give us a COVID-19 update. Good morning, Katrina. want to model good um, mask wearing behavior. Uh, for the record, Katrina Rothenberger, Public Health Division Director for Marion County Health and Human Services. Uh, yesterday, we reported 381 positive tests, 3,056 negative tests, 88 folks have been hospitalized, and 14 deaths. Um, we continue to encourage our community members to practice the painstaking social distancing measures that are really working to help slow the spread of uh, coronavirus in Oregon. Um, for our operations, we have 84 people working in Marion County to support our COVID-19 incident response. Um, we're also working to release more granular data and um, that will hopefully be available on our dashboard soon. Uh, we are recommending that you should wear a mask whenever you go out in public. Um, previously, we had recommended this for folks who were unable to maintain a six, six feet social distancing, but it's really hard to anticipate when and where and be able to maintain that six feet at all times if you have to go to the grocery store or, um, other errands that you might have to run. Um, I, we're also getting a lot of questions about what, what is contact tracing. And contact tracing is a core public health function that we do every day for lots of other diseases that are reportable by law. For example, measles and tuberculosis and HIV. Um, and what that means in a nutshell, there's a lot of videos about contact tracing online right now. Um, we feel like public health is finally being recognized, like, yes, this is a process we've been doing for a very long time and it really works. Um, but what that looks like is we receive a lab result and notification from a doctor's office. Uh, we call the person who is sick and ask about their signs and symptoms and really confirm whether or not they meet our definition for a case. Uh, we ask about their close contacts and where they've been in the previous 14 days. We also provide support to make it easy for families to self-isolate. Um, yesterday, Oregon Health Authority changed the testing criteria and we hope that more tests will become available uh, in our community. And with more testing available, we're ramping up our uh, contact tracing efforts. So uh, that's my update for today. Thank you. Very good. Any questions? Well, I just wondered how, it, just, just go through it. So you have somebody that meets the symptoms. You then contact those people that he's had direct contact with. But then how far does that go? Do you tell mm -hmm. those people to be aware of any of your close associations or do you go down several generations or what? It depends on the definition. And the definition has changed over time. So before it was a close contact was 60 minutes. And now it's between 10 and 30 minutes. So if you've spent 10 to 30 minutes with someone in a close proximity, then we ask for their names. And then we contact those people close to them and ask them, you know, do you have any signs and symptoms? Because they could already be experiencing illness as well by the time we get that positive case. So it just really depends on who is sick and um, who they've been in contact with. And we just encourage them to uh, self-isolate and stop seeing, going out in public, going to the grocery store, uh, seeing extended family members. So it, it really just depends on who that confirmed case has been in contact with. And then if anyone else has symptoms, then we work on getting their contacts as well. So like if they, I know even I took my dog to the vet yesterday and it was one person at a time in there and all this kind of stuff. But even say they're at work, uh, would you notify the establishment and is there anything you would tell them to do? You know, if it's more a little bit casual than you described? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do notify employers if there is an employee who is ill and we need to get records from HR. Um, we need to ask them about their work environment and uh, what that individual had been doing for the past 14 days, when the last day they were at work was. So we do we do, do that. I'm going to be careful how I ask this because I don't know what you want to say, but in this do you find areas of the county that are uh, more clustered or what's going on? Um, and I don't, you don't have to say specifically, just answer yes or no. Yeah, tell yeah, me and we're working it. to release that information soon. Okay. Uh, we're pulling that data. We've been pulling data at a more granular level so that we can mobilize certain resources and guidelines and information. Um, and we hope to be able to release it more granularly than just at the county level very soon. Now, I'm thinking one more thing that I don't think I've heard you say publicly, but perhaps you have. We, we know around the country, and perhaps I think in Marion County, too, uh, nursing homes, those kind of centers. Are, so, so describe the scenario that you, you locate a positive mm -hmm. in one of those facilities, and then what would you do next? Yeah, that's a really good question. So in a, like a long-term care facility setting, uh, we're really concerned about that vulnerable population. So if there is a staff person or a resident of that facility, then they automatically rise to our list. And we keep a list of all these facilities with an active case in a staff person or an active case in a resident. Um, we call them to make sure that they, that they know how to set up an isolation wing we, and that they uh, isolate the resident and um, the staff person does not return to work until they are symptom free for 72 hours. Um, so the facilities that we are currently working with, we've made outreach to all of them. Um, we're not seeing that list grow exponentially yet, um, but we do. We are monitoring um, eight facilities at this time, and five of them have active outbreaks, which is which means three or more cases. I'll be done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for all you're doing too. Thank you. I just want to, Katrina. I want to thank you for the hard work that you and your team have been doing. Um, I know we've been in meetings and discussing why we have maybe more cases than others mm -hmm. um, and uh, we just so the public knows and the media that's watching we we've been having meetings with uh, leaders in particular uh, geographic areas to help educate uh, we talked about the Russian materials that we have out and the Spanish materials that we have out uh, as well as the English materials we have out for those communities that really uh, need some support and some help in communicating and in practicing the social distancing and understanding how uh, they need to behave um, to, to help us pull this curve down. And I know we were asked yesterday about, um, I don't know if we even had a chance, I, I saw it late last night, a chance to, uh, by Friday, to put a plan on how we're going to reopen Marion County together. Um, and uh, I was just upstairs this morning working with Barb and HP to... Uh, uh, take the the existing format that we know is has been pushed down from the feds in the state to, to to talk about those criteria and he's up there right now trying to put a draft together this is all happening so fast so quickly um, and um, somebody was kind of and I love uh, our DA's comment I think it was her husband somebody was criticizing and I've used this line several times this is my first pandemic and uh, our first pandemic and when somebody you know you you look at them and say have you had this before have you faced this before because maybe you know better um and i just this is a time where everybody and and i said this to some business people look i understand i own businesses still uh we want to get back to work we want our employees to be safe we want to be able to get the economy going but we have to be patient we have to work together and it's not a time to point fingers uh, it's not a time to blame others. It's a time to really try to take the best information that we have, communicate in the best way possible uh, with, that, with that information and, and help people uh, get through this. Um, and we will. Um, but I just want to thank you, Ryan, your team, everybody that's working 24-7, weekends, nights, um, 
to uh, do this. And I know this week, we we were talking about this yesterday, it feels like we've been working 60 hours already and only today's Wednesday. Um, and so, and I know you guys are doing even more than, than we are. So thank you very much for what you're, you're doing. I think it's important too to remember this, as much as we're working hard and we are seeing challenges, um, there are other communities that are much worse off than we are in this country when it comes to this. So, I mean, it is a testament to the work that, that you all have done that um, our hospitals are not overwhelmed and they're not, uh, we're able to manage the caseload that we're seeing. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have the consent agenda. And even though this looks like yeah, I a consent like agenda that Commissioner Ventana would do, I think it's Commissioner Ventana. Commissioner Cameron's uh, turn. What? Oh, the, the consent agenda. It's, consent, it's, it's, if you're it's not the Sam-style right, yeah. consent agenda. <laughs> I got something to smile about today. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know what? I I defer to my Would colleague. You? I mean, you know, he likes it when it's like this. You know, I, I want to do something nice for you. Well, today. it's just I'm so happy in a name I can read. So, Chair Willis, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar this morning. We have one item on, on it under the tax office. Approve an order for a property tax refund in the amount of $15,821.61 to George Kirk. I will second that motion, and it's so short of a motion today. We have a motion and a second, and a very good deed done by Commissioner Cameron. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. Okay, next up we have Tom Rolfing and Rachel is still. We're going to consider a resolution approving fiscal year 2020 2021 county assessment function funding assistance grant. Wow, that was a mouthful. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Tom Rolfing, Marion County Assessor. Uh, Rachel is still and I are here this morning to present the fiscal year 2021. Uh, County Assessment Function Funding Assistance Grant, CAFA. It's a mouthful. <clears throat> um, the 1989 legislature created this grant and, um, and it's to mitigate the, uh, the statewide deterioration in the property tax system caused by a variety of factors, including local funding. Um, <clears throat> this, this program, it, it, funds, it funds the a portion of uh, the assessor's office, the tax office, the clerk's office, and the treasurer's office, and uh, and and some related IT expenditures. So, we uh, we put this information together, our total costs, and um, and we get a portion of, of what we spend on on funding our assessment and taxation system back from this grant. Uh, the grant uh, collects revenue from uh, from recordings property recordings and uh, and from delinquent interest and um, the total the total funds to be to be distributed statewide this year for fiscal 2021 distribution are projected to be 18 million 18.3 million dollars which is a 1.1 percent decrease from last year um, the certified grant expenditures <coughs> Uh, for Marion County, all departments is seven million one hundred fifty-eight thousand seventy-five dollars. So that's all of the departments reporting. Uh, actual grant revenue to Marion County is estimated to be one million forty thousand six hundred seventy-nine dollars. Um, it's fourteen point five four percent of the total amount Marion County exp uh, spends on assessment and tax. Um, that's that's the gist of it. So it's it it did originally cover about thirty five percent of county expenditures, and now it's under fifteen percent. So it, it's changed quite a bit over the years, and it's declining. Our expenses are rising faster than the revenues. Any questions for Tom? Well, I would have been asking just that. Isn't it wrong? But we see that every everywhere with the state right. and community corrections everywhere. Uh, when costs go up, uh, the agreement made to cover this much of it, they just let it whittle away, and that's just fine. Let the local county government uh, absorb that. And that's just wrong. Right. 
And so we one fulfill of the a lot of the state's function when we're doing these things. Isn't that correct? Is, yeah. is it a state function? No. Well, it, it, it goes. The funding goes to all of our all of our local districts, right? Um, the county, the cities, the the fire districts, the school districts, things like that. So, um, and it has the amount. Uh, the amount that's covered by CAFA has been decreasing over time, and and uh, one of the initiatives that uh, that Osaka, the Oregon State Association of County Assessors, has for uh, for the legislature is trying to find some solution for uh, stable funding for assessment and tax. Uh, there's some counties that are hurting a lot more than Marion County. That are what hurting? Hurt, hurting a lot more. The only one I can think of I don't like is you would ask those local governments you distribute to to share more of that cost, but do that to them either right but it costs us about seven million dollars every year and this grant covers about a million dollars is that correct basically it? No. Okay. ready for motion mr chair i'll move that we uh approve the fiscal year 2021 county assessment function funding assistance grant second we have a motion a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Tom. Thank, Thank you. you, Rachel. Okay, next up we have Sherry Linter, uh, and we're going to consider approval of a proclamation designating the week of April 19th through 25th, 2020, as National Volunteer Week in Marion County. Good morning, Sherry. I'm Sherry Lintner, Volunteer Services Coordinator for Marion County. Thank you for having me this morning. Quick note, um, the PowerPoint, I just have some running slides um, so you can get a visual of Marion County volunteers. Um, I am here today because we are celebrating National Volunteer Week uh, and I'm pres uh, bringing a proclamation to uh, designate this week volunteer week in Marion County. Traditionally, we have also presented our volunteer awards at this time. And as you can see, there are no volunteers here. We are going to be presenting awards and we are uh, devising our plan on how we're going to do that with good, safe social distancing and at the same time give our volunteers the recognition that we really feel that they deserve. So you'll hear more about that um, in the coming weeks. Um, so please just take a look at the photo loop. Uh, they represent the variety of volunteers and the variety of volunteer roles that we have here at Marion County. And you know, I have seen so many people on social media pulling uh, uh, Mr. Rogers quote, which is look for the helpers. And the reason I want to mention that today is uh, even though we are here today really to recognize our 2019 volunteers, uh, it would, I just feel be remiss to not talk for a moment about the volunteers that have come forward uh, as we've responded to the COVID-19 um, response. So you're going to see some pictures um, as you scroll through for our emergency management volunteers. We have a significant pool of emergency management volunteers that train and prepare all year long. Medical Reserve Corp volunteers this year were dispatched and helped to set up the Oregon Medical Station. That's the 250 uh, bed temporary hospital that got set up at the Oregon State Fairgrounds. We have had retired Marion County employees come forward to uh, be part of some of that that Katrina talked about this morning, some of the longer term uh, tracing and phone calls that have to be made and it is very uh, 
it's, it's just really nice to have Marion County employees come forward. They're familiar with our systems. They, they're familiar with our policies. They're familiar with the work that's already being done. And those volunteers will be able to hit the ground running. So that's been an important part of our response. Uh, we also have community members with very specific sets of skills that are coming forward. And hopefully we'll, we'll maybe have some social media or some um, other areas to highlight these volunteers because I think it's, it's such a somber time. But at the same time, there's so many silver linings. And for me personally, looking at the applications coming through, it, it has just been very rewarding. So we have uh, former, former FEMA disaster response specialists. We have retired public health nurses, retired public health administrators. We have furloughed, furloughed, furloughed uh, healthcare workers like CNAs who are not able to work in their regular jobs that are coming forward to volunteer for Marion County at this time. So it is, I think, a great week to be talking about volunteers and celebrating how much they, they do provide for us here at Marion County. Uh, the other group I, I want to mention really quickly, we have had probably close to two dozen uh, public health graduate and other public health students come forward from Willamette University and Oregon State University as well, and they have all been uh, uh, connected with and deployed then with our public health uh, staff to help with the long-term response. So I just wanted to mention that today because it's just a really touching time in that regard. But today I am here with a proclamation uh, that uh, celebrates volunteers and, and designates this week as Volunteer Week in Marion County. And uh, there's more stories and more numbers than there's time to share today, but I will mention really quickly a couple of highlights on our programs that use volunteers. 2,000 plus uh, victims of crime received services and supports through our victims assistance program. 1,400 plus dogs were reunited or placed uh, appropriately and cared for at our dog shelter in 2019. Our cadets, who are uh, volunteers with the sheriff's office, provided traffic and security at over 50 events in 2019. And fair volunteers provided exhibit opportunities for youth and adults at the county fair. And the number of exhibits were over 5,900. So the opportunities for folks to get involved at the county fair uh, is extensive and would not happen without the support of fair, fair volunteers. In Marion County in 2019, we had uh, 1,730 unduplicated volunteers. We had a total of 2,548 volunteer roles that those volunteers filled. And in total, our volunteers in 2019 provided uh, 105,661 hours of volunteer service. So with that, uh, and in alignment with National Volunteer Week, uh, which was established in 1974, I will um, defer to you to consider the proclamation proclaiming this week as Volunteer Week in Marion County. Any questions for sure? Uh, I will, just a couple of comments. I'm glad you went over these numbers, the 2,548 uh, volunteers, and you put a value of that almost $2.7 million, but that just shows it's no small time thing, and we really do depend on these people in the county. But I wanted to give you an opportunity, I love putting people on the spot, at the top of your head, is there some place and use this opportunity to appeal for a specific need you're looking for? Is there anything jumps out at you, especially in these times? I heard a lot about medical and stuff, so that's been coming through and that's wonderful, but anything else that you just say, oh my God, I need to fill this? Uh, well, we actually have a couple of advisory board positions and folks can go on our volunteer webpage on the Marion County website and look at those. Uh, program volunteers, other than those that we are deploying through emergency management or through the Health and Human Services COVID response, 
for the most part are suspended right now. So we aren't doing a lot of recruiting for things we normally would be recruiting right now for park hosts and maybe for some litter, uh, litter cleanups and different spring projects. Right now, until we have a really solid plan, most of those have been suspended. So uh, if, if we have folks interested in advisory board positions, we are in particular needing a budget committee member for the uh, Marion County uh, Extension and 4-H Service District. So that is uh, a uh, limited commitment. That budget committee member would not be attending monthly meetings, but they would be attending you know, maybe three, three meetings a year as the budget for the service district is developed and recommended. All right, just while I'm talking, then I would make a motion that we do approve a proclamation that designates the week of April 19th to 25th to 2020 as National Volunteer Week in Marion County. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Read it. Who's going to kick yeah. us off? Oh, you want me to start it? Please. Before the Board of Commissioners for Marion County, Oregon, in the matter of proclaiming April 19th through the 25th, 2020, as Volunteer Week in Marion County. Proclamation reads. This matter came before the Marion County Board of Commissioners at its regular scheduled public meeting on April 22, 2020. Whereas the entire community can inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take actions that change the county, and whereas during this week all over the nation service projects will be performed and volunteers recognized for their commitment to service, and Whereas volunteers in Marion County have undertaken responsibilities that promote the general welfare of the county, and whereas in providing these services, volunteers have demonstrated a spirit of personal concern and wholehearted willingness to help others, and whereas individuals and communities are at the center of social change, discovering their power to make a difference, and whereas experience teaches us that government by itself cannot solve all of our social problems, and... Whereas our county volunteer force of citizens is a great treasure, and whereas these volunteers ask nothing more than the satisfaction of a job well done, and whereas these individuals are most deserving of appreciation and thanks. Now, therefore, we, the Marion County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 19th through 25th, 2020, as Volunteer Week in Marion County, and urge our fellow citizens to volunteer in their respective communities. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Sherry. Sherry, thank you for the work you do. <clears throat> Sherry, just a second, we'll have a copy for you. Okay. And next up, we have Under Sheriff Wood and Commander Ladd. And we're going to consider approval of a purchase order with Workspace Interiors by Office Depot in the amount of $153,531.54 for the purchase and installation of furniture for the Sheriff's Office records, civil, community relations, and administrative staff located in the Marion County Courthouse. Good morning, Commander. Commissioners, good morning. Mr. Chair, for the record, my name is Eric Ladd. I'm the Operations Commander for Sheriff Cast in the Marion County Sheriff's Office. With me this morning is Under Sheriff Jeff Wood, uh, Under Sheriff for the Marion County Sheriff's Office and socially distant at the back of the room. <laughs> we are here today to request approval for a purchase order with Workspace Interiors by Office Depot in the amount of 153000 531,054 for the purchase and installation of furniture for the Sheriff's Office Operations Division, including records, civil community relations, code enforcement, judicial security, our administrative unit, all of which are located in the Marion County Courthouse. This originally was a two-phase CIP designed to occur over fiscal years 1920 and 2021. The project will replace cubicle systems and office furniture at the courthouse. This workspace was fully replaced in 2006 following the 2005 incident at the courthouse. Um, many of those uh, items then when the replacement happened were repurposed uh, cubicles and office furniture for our administrative staff. Uh, again in 2015 about a half dozen uh, workspace, workspaces were replaced uh, again with repurposed furniture. Uh, the repurposed furniture has outlived its functionality and is in need of replacement. The new, the new furniture uh, and workspaces will be ergonomically designed and will improve the efficiency of our administrative professionals. 
Working with finance, we selected workspace interiors through Office Depot uh, and leveraging an existing price agreement because of Office Depot's capacity, expertise in planning, responsiveness to county needs, and because the county has previous experience with this vendor for recent infrastructure projects. We are working with business services and information technology for implementation as we move forward with the purchase and installation of this furniture. On this Administrative Professionals Day, I thank you for your consideration in requesting approval of a purchase order with Workspace Interiors by Office Depot for the purpose for the purchase and installation of furniture for the Sheriff's Office Operations Division. Myself and the Under Sheriff are here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Commander Lab? Well, you know, if you wouldn't carve your name on those desks, we wouldn't have to do this. That's my <laughs> first thought. But I know that isn't the case. I was here when that was all. They were burnt, shot up, uh, replaced. I didn't realize how many years that's, I came to do the math. Fourteen years later, we're finally getting squared away right. So I, I'm, I'm fine with this project. Appreciate that. Thank you. Commissioner, any right. questions? Uh, no, good. All right. Good to see you, Commander. It's good to be here, sir. Yeah. How are your troops holding up? Doing well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, downtown, and uh, you know, we have some folks telecommuting, uh, sort of keeping people socially distant. Um, our judicial security staff continues to have court operations working, and so just working with them. So our folks are doing well. Yeah. I know I've seen uh, several patrols more and, and have had um, residents up in Detroit comment about how many more, how much more visible uh, people are. I've your, noticed that as your, well. Your, your guys are, are just really doing a good job out there on the patrol side, too, as well. So well, We appreciate that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I know you used to supervise that area. So, um, All right. Uh, motion? Please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve a purchase order with uh, Workspace Interiors by Office Depot in the amount of $153,531.54 for the purchase and installation of furniture for the Sheriff's Office Records, Civil, Community Relations, and Administrative Staff located in the Marion County Courthouse. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Commander. Thank you all very much. Okay. Uh, we don't have any public hearings today, and so we'll read our calendar. Commissioner Cameron, if you would. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Today at 11 o'clock, um, we have a BOC CAO spa meeting uh, in the commissioner's boardroom here on the fifth floor. Today also at 1 o'clock, uh, state parks and AOC conference call uh, at uh, obviously on the telephone. Uh, today at 2.30, we have a special meeting for the Board of Commissioners and I believe the city Salem and Kaiser, and that will be done in the commissioner's boardroom. Um, just so those that are watching, that's one of those calls that we just talked about with Katrina that we're trying to put more emphasis throughout our community. Uh, on Monday, the 27th at 8.30, we have calendar review in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor. Every time I say commissioner's boardroom, I'm actually thinking of the <coughs> ballroom. Sure. Right. We'll have okay. to have something there. Right. Uh, move all the tables out. Wouldn't that be fun? When, that's where your retirement party could be. People yeah. are going to be confused. People are going to think, totally. think there waltz. actually is a commissioner's ballroom the more you say that. Yeah. People For the could. record, there is no commissioner's ballroom. Yeah. We this can is, make one. Oh, yeah. Come on. Mr. Burgess this. just showed up. <laughs> there's, a, a, there's hardly any chairs here we could turn this one in and dance for. <laughs> We've got social distancing going on here in the audience. All right, so also on the 27th, which is Monday, management update location is in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor. Monday on the 27th at 11 a.m., BOC CAO meeting to begin immediately following management update. And for executive session, if needed, Pursuant to ORS, all those numbers that legal counsel would love me to read, but I'm not going to. <laughs> On 428, Tuesday at 2 p.m., uh, Health and Human Services Policy Group meeting, again in the commissioner's boardroom. On Tuesday, the 28th at 2 p.m., Marion County Housing Authority regular board meeting in the commissioner's boardroom. On Wednesday, the 29th, we're back here for our regular board session here in the senator hearing room on the first floor. 
and Wednesday on the 29th, a uh, BOC CAO's SPA meeting location in the commissioner's ballroom. What? Oh, I didn't look over on the other side. Good. All right. Sounds so could I? Cool. One that wasn't listed there is we're having a special lunch for Administrative Assistance Day. I, it could be a disaster, just so you know, but we're having salmon tacos. No, nobody knows how to make them, but we're going to do it. Kevin, you provided. Oh, I know how to make them. You do? Okay. This could be I worked last night. I, 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 uh, I made pot beans. Uh, so there's, there's a crock pot of pot beans, pinto beans up there that you're going to love. We have an expert. We have, an, and, we have a resident expert. And then I made a cilantro lime um, sauce. That okay. will, well, this garlic, is all sounding better. Garlic. I brought some what would no, just be by themselves, my best batch of salmon. Right, and favorite. we'll take your best batch of salmon, and, and there's a griddle up there. I think I brought in the griddle yesterday, and we're going to – right. re. it's almost like making carnitas out of your salmon. We're going to put a little oil down, which I forgot oil. Uh, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> And, and then you just grill the salmon, and, and then we've got uh, flour or corn tortillas. Um, this doesn't sound like distance. the worst thing I, ever. I, I, I think somebody brought cheese. I don't know if anybody brought lettuce or cabbage. Well, I but, hope so, and sour cream still. Well, my sauce is the sour cream. It's oh, made it with sour cream. Excuse and me. We've got an expert over okay, there. Okay, I'm done. You know, come on. Sour cream, mayonnaise. You're going on longer on this than cilantro, I to. The Fresh point, cilantro. I had a point behind this. It's going to be good, Sam. The only thing I'm concerned about is there's the, the beans I made. Um, I may I may may have made them a little too salty, but oh, you'll you be never the judge. Be too salty. You'll be the judge of that. But here's the point I want. Okay, to make. good. I knew you had a point. We to... we had I had a, a great day and an activity plan for this day, and I'm going to still do it sometime as soon as things open up. Um, but the real point is, I just so appreciate all these people that uh, make it work for us in our office. And there were some scary times, and we've all been through this lately. We're not knowing what, what this all means, and yet here they come in like troopers and happy and getting it done, making it work. Um, we got a great crew, and I yeah. just wanted to say it one time out loud. Well, and Brenda's right here. I know. If it wasn't I for Brenda, it. I wouldn't know what I was doing when I well, walked in here. Well, that's been talked about, yes. So... Uh, <laughs> On a serious note, um, we got an email yesterday, late yesterday, that we have to have our plan to reopen the county in by Friday to um, AOC. I mean, we don't have, we, they're, they're requesting it. So um, HP is back. Uh, Barb and I met with him this morning. Um, we're going to take the you know, the federal sheet that says reopening mm -hmm. America and then reopening Oregon, there's another one, and we're going to take that. And Barb and I sat down. Well, we didn't sit down. We had HP way over here, and he listened to us with his mask on, and I had my mask on, and said, here, just go through this thing. We're going to add columns, or hopefully we'll get a draft of that. I just said, just put it together so that we can all three look at it uh, with Katrina, legal counsel, um, hopefully by tomorrow we can look at that and start filling in our columns on the things that we would do to, to, to follow the procedures that are coming at us uh, with the knowledge that we've been getting from uh, our local community. Uh, this call today with the City of Salem will help. Um, we, we can talk about what we're doing there and what they're planning on doing. Um, and we may, and, and one of the, the pages, there's, there's this picture of, you know, the United States or there's a picture of Oregon. I said, HP, put a picture of Marion County on here. And we can start to even say we may have places in Marion County that we go, hey, we can do certain things there. We've got a call this afternoon with the state parks uh, that, you know, what, what's it going to take to open a boat ramp at Detroit Lake? Um, Tillamook Bay. Right. Don't use the day use area, but what are we going to do to, 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 to let people go out in their own boats that, that, that they can practice social distancing and put some trust in the people that they're going to do those things? I know we put limits on our parks, too, but I don't believe, this is me, I don't think we should have ever, state parks should have been ever closed. They can make rules or requirements. That's all part of They don't want people traveling at all, but I, I do not see a great exposure from people being in our state parks if they're falling social distance, and you can watch that. Well, I think, uh, I think certain, I think it makes sense that certain places where people may congregate, like underneath a shelter, and, you know, you, we run into the, some, of the, some of those things that we know that things are happening. Maybe it was 
maybe it was okay to do that, but uh, to, well, to really like, not, one size doesn't fit all. Right, and right. I would like to see some real looks at yeah. that to have some opportunity to do something around Oregon. Yeah. And you have to eventually, so soft opening, whatever you call it, but start. So that's starting to happen, and we're gonna we're gonna have to work. I, I got that email last night, and I went, "Oh my gosh!" All the work we've been doing the last couple of days, and I went, "How are we gonna get this done?" We and haven't thought, had great conversations, even how I didn't know this. I'm sorry. Even our building's still closed up, other than escorted in. It's time to to get figure that, that out, right? We need to figure that out, and what's that look like? Yeah. You know, if you had, if you don't have a mask on, don't come in. Maybe right? Those types of things. That. Oh, well, I don't have a mask, then I'm done. Nice. Well, we'll have to work through it. I'm not using yours. <laughs> I think we can get you a mask. Yeah. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Well, it's good to see the rain. It is good to see the we rain. Need, we need a, a, we need a we, lot more. We need a deluge. This should add a little, though. This is that kind of rain doesn't just but, soak. Well, it's really cool because, you know, how, how you look at it. You drive. I didn't, I didn't go up last night. I stayed down here. I'm house-sitting for my daughter. But... Uh, that when you drive by every day and you see a few more docks, if you see just a little bit of water, you couldn't put a boat out there, right? No. But you could just see a little more water on oh. the docks. You know it's coming up. But uh, I, I have a, I bet somebody that I don't think it's going to happen unless we get a deluge here in We need a good May. weekend. We need a good weekend. We need weekend a good week of not, not steady, a six steady hour rain. Dose. Yeah, yeah, not, not just one day. So. All right. With that, we're adjourned. All right. from Northwest Artists.